Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenMara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And tonight, today, whenever you see this, I would like to offer your elemental energy reading for the element of Earth for August of 2024. And the Earth energy covers the zodiac signs of Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. If you're curious as to why I read for energies versus the zodiac, you can check out a video I made down below. Um, also, if you've never had your natal charts done and you're not sure where your elemental alignment is, there is a chart down below. It's not a uh, <laughs> endorsed anything like that. It's just a chart I really do like because it gives you your birth chart, but then it also gives you a whole bunch of information, 10 to 20 pages or so, and also tells you what your elemental alignment is. So it's pretty in-depth. Um, with that being said, we're going to start off with our uh, I Ching, and I cast the hexagram beforehand, try to save a little bit of time on the videos. And we have hexagram number 10 for our Earth family, and that is treading and conduct. Though he treads upon the tiger's tail, it does not bite him success. Just from the base text so far, it sounds like this is going to be a pretty good month for Earth, but we'll have to dive in and see. Our caps are capstone. Our bottom, our foundation here, is simple in his conduct, he goes forth no error. What they're saying is, if you lay the foundation of simplicity, do the inner work, uh, do the do the things that may be seeming uh, may seem a little bit boring. But just by doing them, getting up every day and doing the meditation, going to the gym, um, researching that project, whatever it is, doing those simple things that may seem mundane and boring, in the long run, it's going to lay the foundation for greater and greater things. Our second place line, the recluse treads his path peacefully. Righteous persistence brings good fortune. You don't even have to tell anybody what you're doing. That's the big part that they're wanting to bring forward is as you're going through and you're doing this inner work and it may start to manifest outwardly, whether it's a business uh, manifestation you're working on, whether it's a relationship aspect you're trying to build or if it's just simply spiritual journeying, it doesn't mean you have to make it public. It doesn't mean you have to be all loud and boisterous about it. They're really wanting to bring up that this is a time for quietness and study. So. Earth, so far it sounds like August is not going to be super hyperactive for you. It's going to be more quiet, subdued, which may not be a bad thing. Our third place line is, Though a man have but one eye, he can still see. Though he be lame, he can still walk. But he who treads upon the tiger's tail will get bitten disaster. The warrior undertakes things for his lord. It doesn't matter where you're at in life. You don't want to get too aggressive with what you're working on this month. Um, even though you only have one eye, you can still see. Though you be lame, still walk. It just means it doesn't really matter where you're at in life and how <laughs> great or how not so great your life is. Things are still going according to plan. When you're treading upon the tiger's tail, that's basically saying don't play with fire. Don't poke at things. Don't push things. It's not, this month is really, they're saying, is just not a very aggressive, charge forward type of month for Earth. It's really saying take things quietly. And it says the warrior undertakes things for his Lord. When you talk about that aspect, it's let other people kind of do the work. It doesn't mean that you have to be the one leading the charge, so to speak. It's really saying this is not your fight is what they're what I'm getting. Um, so our next, our f uh, fourth line, to tread with impunity upon a tiger's tail, breathless caution is required, good fortune in the end. If, as you go through the month, there is a point where you might accidentally step on <laughs> the tiger's tail, so to speak, and that maybe you inadvertently fall into a disagreement. You may inadvertently fall into a situation that is a little bit more aggressive or hostile than what you were anticipating. Take caution. 
don't react in aggression. Breathless caution is required. Don't respond to the situation is what I'm, what they're saying. So good fortune in the end, that's pretty simple. If something boils over, stand back, let it do its thing. Don't get aggressive. They're really wanting just to say this month is not going to be hyperactive for Earth. He treads our fifth place line. He treads delicately. Persistence could lead to trouble. Again, that doesn't mean you have to push everything forward. They're, <laughs> they're saying, they as my guides, are saying that this is a vacation month for Earth. Things are still going along. Things are still happening. But you don't have to be the driving force behind it. Kind of going with the flow, tap into your uh, more water side of things. Just to be a bit more mellow through life. So our capstone here, if they watch their step or look to their conduct and heed omens, sublime good fortune will be theirs. This is, this could be your omen. Um, <laughs> basically just take the time, don't stress about things this month. Really find ways to be at peace with the world as a whole. Uh, the world right now, in August of 2024 is a little on the uh, struggling side for peace <laughs> it's a little bit chaotic out there but for earth the universe is saying this is a time for you to just take a breath step back from everything and allow yourself to just be be at peace be quiet do the inner work do the gentle stuff it's not about being aggressive and pushing forward for you in this particular month anyway. Um, we can see what the tarot has to say and see how it either supports or <laughs> maybe gives some side information. And I read intuitively just with as with the I Ching. So the messages that come through may or may not be exactly what the cards uh, book definitions are. And there's approximately four and a half weeks in August. So we'll read through a five week window. And I read for the, um, <laughs> I have too many things going on right now, sorry. I read for a guide or guardian for each week, a message from source, and then a lesson or challenge from the tarot. The guide or guardian is coming in to support you, to guide you through the week, or to guard you from any unexpected uh, surprises that may pop up. The message from source is a supporting message, something to give you encouragement or uh, possibly a little bit of insight into something that's going on and the lesson or challenge from the tarot is a lesson you can choose to work on or a challenge that might be giving you a heads up that there's something going on in that time period and <laughs> just so everyone's aware these are going in order according to how I see them but they may be rearranged for how your life tends to reflow so with that we'll hop in here your first guide or guardian is the angels of composure so with composure this is knowing what to say when to say it and when to be silent and these angels are great for being in public speaking or if you happen to be in a form of job where there's a possibility of hostility <laughs> whether it's verbal hostility if you work in retail you know what I'm talking about or if it's physical hostility, you know, law enforcement, things like that. But knowing how to keep your composure, staying in balance when everything is going chaotic is the what the angels are going to try to bring in this first week. And it's helping you find that inner peace, that inner balance. Just like with I Ching, it doesn't always have to be about being aggression. Sometimes being the most composed is to be the one who is silent. And that is a difficult thing in some situations from experience so <laughs> your message from source is tears there's times when it's just better to step away and allow yourself to have the tears you can be the most composed person in the world and be melting down inside what source wants to say is this first week be gentle with yourself take the time you need you can be composed at work you can do all the things be as you know upfront professional friendly fun fill in the blank but if you need to take the moment set aside the time to f allow your feelings to exist allow your feelings to be acknowledged don't wallow 
that's not what we're saying here. What they're saying is allow them to be recognized. Recognizing your emotions and how you feel about a situation or a thing is actually validating you. It's not saying, oh, this is my entire identity. No, that's not you. That is an emotion that you're feeling in this moment. It's important to experience that emotion, understand the source and core of it, and you may not in the moment. It might come down a couple days later, all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's what that was all about. But allow yourself to feel the emotions when they show up. It doesn't mean you have to wallow in them. It doesn't mean they have to be outward displays of you know wailing and gnashing of teeth or anything. But allow yourself to feel this first week especially. Your lesson or challenge from the tarot is the two of winter. Indecision is holding you back. Make the choices that are best for you rather than trying to please others. Feeling trapped between the intellectual and emotional. The intellect is saying emotions are garbage, don't use them. Emotions are saying, feel everything to the fullest extent. You stand in the center. This first week is really calling you to get your balance together. That's where the angels of composure can help you understand. There's times when you need to say, nope, just a second, put the emotions on the back burner. I'm in this situation, I need to deal with it. And then when you step away from said situation, that's when you can feel. But that's where this first week is going to be a uh, <laughs> war of opposites because you're going to have the more emotional side of life but you also have the intellectual side and they're kind of at conflict with each other is what I'm hearing this first week so find the peace find the balance step away when you need to and allow yourself to feel and heal let's see what is your second week's guide or guardian and it is the angels of surrender this month is really about earth allowing and flowing the angels of surrender are not saying give up what they're saying is you don't need to control it this month especially the second week you've learned your you've earned the composure from the first week you're starting to understand that balance because there's been some intensity that's been going on and it might have shaken you a little bit this first week is saying reground your earth you can do this the second week is to surrender what is not serving you? The angels are saying, surrender that to source, let go. It is not yours to hold any longer. So if there's an emotional state like frustration at fill in the blank, if there is anger at something that's going on, that's not really yours to be carrying this month. So just let that go. The second week is about surrendering the heavier, the denser, the the things that do not light you up, it's time to let them go. There's lessons to be learned from everything, and I'm not saying to give up on the lesson, but the emotional control that it has over you is no longer needed, and that's the thing you can surrender at this time. So, your message from Source is merriment. Because when you surrender, when you let go of those heavier energies, you find that innocent joy. I mean, the boys are just having a ball here. And there's a little fairy here that's, you know, playing along with them. And if you've ever had one of these metal tops, I can hear that thing right now because I used to have one. <laughs> but it's about having fun. When you surrender the weight, when you surrender the stress, the frustration, it allows you to find that joy and peace. The first week was about balance. The second week was let go of the things that are not serving you. The things that are not, basically, not supporting peace and joy in life. Now, that doesn't mean, oh, my f spouse is driving me crazy this week. Your spouse is going to drive you crazy, and let me tell you a secret, you're driving your spouse crazy too. So that's just life. <laughs> but when you find the merriment of letting go of, it's just a job, why worry about it? Those things on TV, those the squawk box, that's just a squawk box. You can push the button, boop, and turn it off. Let that stuff go. It's not necessary, but find the joy. Go out on that dinner. Go see that movie. Play in the mud with the kids. It's warm enough you can still do that. Go outside and throw the ball for the dog, whatever it is, but just find joy in the second week because you've surrendered the stuff that's not working for you. The lesson or challenge is the Queen of Spring. Brilliant, loyal, talented, and friendly. Believe in yourself. Wonderful people want to help maintain a balance between work and home. Balance, balance, balance. 
But the Queen of Spring means that there's a feminine energy that's coming forward. And it could be from within you. It could be someone from the outside coming in. They're going to support your... <laughs> My guys were like, they're going to support the giggles. So find ways to really tap into that. They're saying that this is more of a lesson and a reminder for you, not so much a challenge. Because being happy and being joyful, there's times where it'll feel like a challenge. But reality, it's a lesson and a reminder. Step back into the innocence of a child. And when the Queen of Spring is coming in, she's coming in with giggles and happiness, laughter, play with puppies, uh, go, you know, <laughs> do the things that make you just smile for no reason. And it's completely involuntary smiles, but that's what she wants to bring in this month, this second week. So that's actually a pretty supportive uh, concept there. Your third week is courage and bravery. The angels of courage and bra bravery are saying it takes a lot to be able to be composed in chaos. It takes a lot to surrender the thing that you feel has been yours for so long, but it's really not any longer because you've moved beyond it. Now it's just baggage you're carrying around. The courage and bravery angels are saying it takes courage to step out and smile. It takes courage and bravery to say, this is not my problem. Because the easy thing is, well, so-and-so thinks this is my problem, so it's, I'm making it my problem. <laughs> or so-and-so can have their problem over there because it's not yours. There are times things will fall into your lap that you have to deal with, but it takes courage to say this isn't mine. Sorry, but no. And just like it says in the I Ching, there's things that are coming up, and this could be that part where you, you stomp on the tiger's tail and get bitten. There's not... It's not always a reason to have yours. It's time to let it go. And the courage to say, you know what? I'm not interested in this. The courage to say, I'm stepping away from this. The bravery to stand up to somebody and say, we're done here. And it's not easy. And it does take a lot of guts. People don't realize sometimes saying no takes more bravery than just dealing with the situation. And that's what the angels want to remind you of is sometimes the bravest thing you can do is to step away. Uh, your message from source is prayer. When you're working with this type of energy where you're having to be courageous, where you're having to be strong, the bravery just doesn't always feel like it's there. There's one tool that you always have. That is your connection to God, source divine, your angels and spirit guides. And you can access that through simple prayer of help me in this moment. Literally, that is all you have to say sometimes is help me in this moment. God's source divine already sees what's going on. It's already available to help you. But there's this little thing called freedom of choice, free will. When you call upon those energies to help you stand in that courage, to step up and be brave, it's amazing how fast you can feel that peace of, nope, this is the right thing to do, and no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you, know, like you, can sit, you can step away from situations easier, and they keep saying it's a situation that's going to come to you, and this is something to walk away from. So this third week, I'm not sure what that exactly is going to work out as, but that's what they're showing is there's something coming in, and they're showing me that you're walking away from it. Like, this is not mine. You keep this away from me. So your lesson or challenge is number two so this is major arcana so this could be through the whole month it's the high priestess trusting your intuition careful reflection before taking action insights that come through meditation this is like the theme for the month for you earth is staying calm staying quiet knowing when to step away the high priestess she talks to the div divine constantly the high priestess energy or high priest if you're a dude out there is to connect into God's source divine and be like, okay, what do I need to do in this moment? Courage and bravery and prayer are huge. The prayer actually ties directly into the high priestess because the high priestess, how I view this particular card is you are so in tune with your intuition that God's source divine, your spirit guides and angels can communicate instantly. You don't really have to, you know, focus and meditate, quiet your mind because you're always available there always is a connection there it's a basically you're having a conversation with your best friend 24 7 365 because you're that close to each other and that's what the high priestess is saying is 
you already have the connections. Just use the use it. <laughs> so let's look at your fourth week's guide or guardian. Do the work. And there's a beautiful star in his chest, and it makes me think of Metatron. I don't know if you can see that star if my camera will zoom right. But this when it says do the work, this fourth week is saying you've went through this process of learning to let go, learning to release. What's interesting is the work that you've been asked to do this month with the I Ching and as well as with the cards is all internal. There's really not much other than the bravery in the third week saying it's an outward thing. Everything else has been work that you're doing inside and the do the work angels are coming in to support you. You've been doing this stuff. You've been kind of... They're, they're saying you've been struggling alone, whether you're in a relationship by yourself, in a bus business partnership. There's been this element within you that feels that you've been doing it all by yourself. And what they're saying is you don't have to. You have angels who are willing to step in and support you. They're also saying that there's another person, someone that you you don't want to burden with your problems who has been waiting like, dude, I'm right here. Why are you not letting me help you? They're saying part of the work this month is being open to that help. When you work with the surrender, when you tap into that kind of energy, it allows you to bring in other people who are in alignment with what your goals and dreams and ambitions are, and they can support you through the work you're doing. So your message from source is evolve when you're doing the inner work it's amazing how the outside world changes i love the word magic because magic is change in a conforming with will when you tap into that type of will when you're doing the inner work and you have the support of the spirit world as well as the physical world they call it evolution but it's really you're you're magically shifting the universe in your section how that works out is going to be look different for every single person out there. So don't think, well, this is the only way, because it's not. Everyone's going to have their own outcome from this. With that being said, as you go through this month and you're doing this inner work, and you're really starting to come to terms with the fact that you don't have to be the one in control of everything, which <laughs> it's not always easy. But the other part is you have the ability to let things go. You don't have to worry about what other people think. When you evolve, when you grow, when you start to understand that magical uh, choice and change that's coming in, it allows you to shift perspective. Shifting perspective can literally change everything in your circle. And that's what the angels of Do the Work is, are saying is there's you don't have to always be in control. And by doing the inner work, by stepping away from all the chaos outside and not worrying about what you know the squawk box and all that stuff is making noise, you actually can change your circle. And in reality, when you start to shift within yourself, the outside world's going to match that. So that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, your lesson or challenge, another major arcana, is the lovers, the uh, true love that is long-lasting, choices made from the heart, a return to good health. When you tap into that inner choice, those inner changes, you find the balance, you find that connection um, not find remember the connection to God's source divine that you carry within you at all times it's a bonding experience where all of a sudden you're like oh why was I so worried about that that was so weird as, as I said the I Ching when you quietly walk through the forest and you step on the tiger it doesn't respond because you're not doing it in aggression this month even with the cards is saying this is about doing inner work it's not about being uh, bold or brash or any of that energy going projective energy this month earth is all about working the inner stuff out and allowing yourself to reconnect in a spiritual sense to god source divine to your angels and with the lover's card reconnecting with your partner primarily but your inner circle as well and this fourth week is when that really is going to start awakening up for you because you've been doing the inner stuff and now the outside world is starting to respond and so this fourth week is time to dehermit <laughs> instead of being you know inside and staying away this is a good time to start stretching out just a little bit again not being pushy not being aggressive with things but being more open to the experiences 
your last week's guide or guardian is vulnerability and freedom. You've done the work, you've processed things, you've been doing the work, you've learned how to step up when need be, even if it was something minor, and that literally can be humongous in the world. It allows you to understand that it's okay to be vulnerable in some situations, but by knowing how to do the inner work and letting go of all of the chaos and the imbalance outside, there is an aspect of freedom, of liberation to that, that a lot of people talk about, but very few people are going to be able to experience. Uh, sorry, they're <laughs> being loud. For you, Earth, this month, tapping into that balance, really finding that center point, that stillness, that connection to source, tapping into the merriment, allowing that to evolve and change you, that is going to give you a feeling of liberation. Now, is it going to last forever? No, sorry. <laughs> Not going to be a... Uh, fibber here and say oh it's going to be the eternal joy but you're going to have access to it and it's going to remind you that this is what's attainable may not be in this life might be in the next one but it's still available when you reach out to it so it's encouraging and kind of frustrating at times is what i'm hearing <laughs> with that uh your message from source is support there's the support will always be available just like in the Harry Potter help will always be offered <laughs> this is what is being offered is the support are you willing to ask for the help whether it's God source divine whether it's the angels spirit guides or a physical friend partner lover are you willing to say you know what in this moment I just need a little help they may not know how to help you but if they're willing to step up and say you know what what can what can we do to fix this what can we do to make this better it could be something as simple as i just need to talk you have the support available this month and that again is calling out a little bit of vulnerability it's not the most comfortable thing but again when you're done with that when you let it out there's a unbelievable amount of liberty freedom however that word translates for you that is available so Earth, it's looking like it's going to be an interesting uh, month of August for you. Your lesson or challenge for this last week of August is the 6th of summer. Child, children or childhood, return of people or romances from your past, remembering events differently in a better or worse light than how they actually occurred. This is kind of a call to action. Are you willing to release the past? Are you willing to tap back into that childlike enjoyment of life? There's times when you look back to the past events and you see them in this dark, very morose, maybe not the best way. Everyone else is like, how did you see it like that? Maybe it's time to re-examine some things that have always been bugging you. Things that sit in the back of your head and they're like, well, so-and-so said that. I cannot believe they said that when I was a junior in high school. Okay, go back to that moment. Go back to that moment. How are you feeling when that person said it? Because the six of summer is saying there's times where we are in a bad place and we'll hear something completely benign and take it dark. It wasn't the other person's intention. That was in our filtering. We saw it that way. And the six of summer is saying go back to those times. Reevaluate. When you do that, release the negativity. Sometimes it's as simple as saying, you know what, this doesn't work for me anymore. I forgive that person. I forgive myself for feeling that way, and I'm going to release it. This month uh, for Earth is not very active outwardly. <laughs> Inwardly, though, there is a call to balance, a call to your own peace. They're saying take the time to take care of yourself. Work and if that means getting a, some counseling, a therapist, what, however that manifests for you, but do the inner work and release the past. It's no longer emotionally needed. It's time to clear some of that uh, karmic gunk up and be able to move forward in a much better place. But Earth, it's going to be a very quiet month. It's going to be a little bit passive, they keep saying, but it's going to end up changing for the better by the end. And the outcome of the month is looking really positive. So it's going to be a good month. Just go with the flow and take it easy. With that, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Drop a like on the video. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, feelings, and opinions. 
and I will see you in the next video.